Are you wondering how to calibrate your incubator so you get the best possible hatch rate? That's what's coming up next in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're working on calibrating my incubator. Why would you want to do that? Well, nine times out of 10, if you have a problem with a hatch, it hatches slow, it hatches too early, you have a poor hatch rate, it's generally related to the temperature. And it's not uncommon for home incubators, the thermostat in them to not read 100% accurate. In fact, any thermometer you get is not always gonna be 100% accurate. And just a couple of degrees either way can make a big difference with your hatch rates. So how do you calibrate a therm or excuse me, an incubator? There we go, get my words out right. Um, well, you're going to need a couple of things to do that. First and foremost is an external thermometer. The thermometer or the thermostat, I should say, on an incubator cannot be calibrated itself. Uh, you're going to have to do that with a known, uh, an, or excuse me, a thermometer that you know is accurate. And before we can use this thermometer, we need to know that it's accurate. So we're going to have to calibrate this thermometer first. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Let me talk about what this thermometer is, first of all and why I like this specific style of thermometer. First of all, it's pretty cheap. Secondly, it is a dial reading, and I know you can't read that from there, but that's okay. It goes from zero degrees up to 220 degrees, and that is important. You wanna make sure that um, whenever you uh, get a thermometer that it reads low enough. A lot of these, especially cooking thermometers, don't go below 100 degrees. So you wanna make sure that you get one that does read low enough. I'll put a link down below for this specific thermometer. Super cheap. Just I don't remember how much they are, five bucks maybe. Um, and I always get two of them uh, because I like to have two thermometers to just make sure that everything is reading correctly. But we're just gonna work on calibrating just the one thermometer today. Oh, I will mention that link down below is, is gonna be an affiliate link. So if you do buy the thermometer through that link, I might get a penny or two of the proceeds off of that. If you decide to do that, thank you so much for supporting me that way. If you don't wanna do that, no hard feelings. You can go buy it on your own, no problem. All right, so the other things that we're gonna need, we're gonna need a glass of ice, and this is, you want this glass to be mostly ice, not mostly water. You're gonna fill in the cracks with the water. So it's, it is ice water, but again, pack as much ice as you can get into the glass, and then just put some water in there to kind of fill in the gap so it's not a bunch of air. And you're also gonna need a pot of water boiling. Make sure it's a pot that you can get most, if not all, of the thermometer submerged in, holding it up and down and uh, get that boiling while we're taking this next reading. Let me bring you in close, we'll show you how this is gonna work. All right, we're gonna start by taking a reading in our glass of uh, ice here. And we know there is a constant with ice. Ice is at 32 degrees, so this should read at 32 degrees. Now make sure that the, uh, the thermometer, when you place it in the ice, is not touching the bottom of the glass, the sides of the glass, it's just submerged in the ice water itself. Give it a few seconds to get to the uh, right temperature and I know you're gonna have a hard time reading this, but once it kinda of evens out, levels out, wait about 30 seconds or so, and take a reading. Right now, this looks like it's reading at about 33 degrees. So that means it is one degree too high. So I'm gonna take a note on a piece of paper over here so I don't forget that. And we're gonna mark that as a negative one. And that's for the freezing point. That means that, now I'll write this over here where you can see it now, I guess, right here. That means that I know that I need for freezing to adjust the temperature down one degree on the thermometer itself to get it accurate at freezing. But we don't want this to be calibrated at freezing. We want this to be calibrated at 100 degrees. So next we're gonna move over to a pot of boiling water and see what the boiling point is. All right, while we're waiting this to come up to a boil, um, I will tell you, boiling water is another constant that we know, so we can use that to kind of calibrate this too. Here's the thing about boiling water though, is it boils at different temperatures at different elevations. So at sea level, water boils at 212 degrees. At my altitude, I'm at 1,004 feet roughly, it boils at 210 degrees. Now you need to know that before you move on to the next step. Easy enough to figure out, I'll put a chart down below that tells what, you know, what the different boiling points are at different elevations, and then just go on Google, search your town name and what the elevation is, and it will tell you, and then you just match it up and you'll know what the constant is. All right, looks like our water is boiling now. Let me kick this down just a tad bit so it doesn't boil over, and uh, get a pair of pliers to hold this uh, 
thermometer with because I don't want to burn myself doing it. And then I'm just going to take a reading in the boiling water too. I don't need to bring you in close for that because, uh, well, it's just the same thing. We're going to take a reading. Again, I'm shooting for 210 degrees. Now what I want to do is hold this thermometer in the boiling water, but again, not touching the bottom of the pan, just holding it there. And let's see, I am reading at, we'll give it a few seconds to kind of level out. And it looks like that's about 204 degrees. So I need to go up six degrees on the boiling point. So I'm gonna make a note on my uh, piece of paper here, six, a positive six. All right, so this isn't too tough a math, don't stress. We know that my freezing point needs to be adjusted down one, my boiling point needs to be adjusted down six. All I'm gonna do is add these two together. Six plus negative one, negative one plus six, either way you look at it, that comes out to five. And then we want to divide this by two because again, we don't want to add this to either side. We want to adjust it halfway in the middle, roughly 100 degrees is what we want to be calibrated for. So we're going to divide this by two and that comes out to 2.5. So we're going to adjust it, the uh, thermometer, 2.5 degrees. Now I'm not probably going to be able to get exactly 2.5 degrees, but as long as I get pretty darn close, it's going to be okay. Now, how do I adjust this? This is pretty simple. There's a nut right here on the back of this thermometer. And all I do is turn that to adjust the temperature. So I'm gonna give it a few seconds here to adjust to the uh, room temperature. Get my pliers out. And then. And then turn it very slowly. I need to go positive 2.5 degrees. So I'm gonna turn this dial to where it reads about 2.5 degrees higher. And again, I know you can't really see that, um, but I did make that adjustment. Now, my, cal my thermometer should be calibrated for pretty darn close to 100 degrees. Let's take it into the incubator. Let's verify if the incubator is reading correctly or not. All right, so I've got my incubator warming up. Um, it's, it's already warm. It's showing 100.2 degrees right now. And then I'm just gonna simply open this up. You could do it a couple of different ways. What I like to do is to open it up, put my, my thermometer right about in the middle of the incubator, and then close it up. And we're gonna give it just a few minutes to, uh, for the temp to kind of level out, for that to take an accurate reading, and then we'll take a reading off that thermometer. All right, so that's probably plenty long enough. The uh, incubator has kind of leveled out. It shows about 99.1 degrees. So uh, we can probably go ahead and take a reading off of our thermometer here. And it looks like we're reading at about 97 degrees. So we're about two degrees off. So that means what I wanna do is make a note on my incubator that it is two degrees low, and then I'll adjust it up whenever I do incubation, two degrees. So instead of 99.5, I'm gonna want it at 101.5 for my incubation. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was one that was requested by several viewers. Um, hopefully it helps you out, gives you a better hatch rate in the end. The most important thing you can do aside from just calibrating your incubator is just watch your hatch rates. If they're hatching slow, if they're hatching late, your temperature is probably too low. If they're hatching early or um, they're not hatching at all, a lot of times that can be that your temperature is too high. So it, you know, aside from trusting the, the, uh, the, cal the calibrated thermometer that you put in there, really watch your hatch. If it hatches right on time, you know you got it just about right. That's going to be the biggest thing you can do to help increase your hatch rates. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, God bless.